What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. Last time we took a look at 10 items you might not have known about and instead of doing 10 more items I decided let's take a little bit of a spin on that and look at 10 abilities you probably didn't know existed in League of Legends. I did my best and dug deep and although some of you might have heard of a few of these I doubt that anybody knows about all 10. But since most of these abilities come from the alpha and beta of League, please keep in mind that footage for them doesn't necessarily exist, but we can still showcase what the abilities were. As well, here are some of my favorite comments from a previous video where you guys commented on my experience from eating a ghost pepper. For a chance to be featured in a future video, leave a comment about what you think the best ability in League is. Anyways, let's get started. The first one was an ability on Fiddlesticks called Paranoia. It was a passive that had the effect, Fiddlesticks' mere presence is enough to cause fear in his enemies, causing them to miss on their attacks. Enemies within his aura have a chance to miss on each attack, works on enemy turrets and creep units, and that percent chance to miss was initially 5, 10, or 15% based on his level at the time. On the June 6, 2009 patch, it was changed to a flat out 10% at all levels. A random chance to miss was such a crazy factor, especially since it affected turrets and creeps that this could honestly decide entire fights in some games if you got lucky enough. I mean just imagine, you get tower dove, your opponent flashes in on you and then their auto attack misses randomly on a 10% chance, and you get your fear off and finish the kill. The swing this ability could bring just based on the randomness was really crazy, so on patch 92524 in the beta of League, it was changed to Fiddlesticks' current passive Dread which is an area of effect magic resistance debuff. Number two is from Jax, called Weapon Mastery. It was a passive that had the effect, Jax gains additional attack damage from items. At first this bonus was a scaling 10, 15, 20, or 25% based on level, but on the May 15th, 2009 patch in the beta, it was changed to a flat 15% at all levels. Back in the beta was when Jax really worked around, at the time, the dodge stat that was in the game, and most of the dodge items didn't really give any flat attack damage, so this passive was a way of giving him a little bit more AD for his money to go along with his dodge focus build. However, this stat proved to be quite quirky, as at the time, two of his abilities actually had a 1.0 AP ratio, and again, as I mentioned, he was really just trying to build dodge rather than actual damage anyways. So on patch 75, it was remade to a new passive called Equipment Mastery, which gave him flat health based on his bonus AP and AD from items. This passive would go on to be remade on patch 132 to his now current passive Relentless Assault that gives him attack speed for hitting an enemy. Next up we have another passive ability, this time from Twisted Fate, called Second Sight. This ability read, Passive, Twisted Fate grants the Second Sight to his allies, increasing their chance to critically hit with basic attacks by 3, 4, or 5%. And this was a global passive, scaling up with levels to give his entire team across the map a flat crit chance percentage. A lot of people know how truly insane Twisted Fate was back at the time, but his old passive really gets unnoticed quite a lot. A flat percent chance to crit can really have an impact on the laning phase if you're lucky, and could often decide an entire fight. Snowballing the lane and having that happen from a random crit chance is just totally unfair. Among all of his other crazy nerfs, this passive was changed to Loaded Dice on patch 79, which had the global effect to give all of his allies additional gold for every unit killed, and that global passive was eventually deemed overpowered again, and was changed to his current Loaded Dice passive on patch 310, which gives only him the bonus gold for killing units. At number 4 and number 5 we're going to be doing just a little bit of double dipping here, since although they are kind of the same ability, we're just going to count them as two. Starting at number 4 we have another passive ability, this time from Teemo, called Eagle Eye. This ability had the effect, Teemo's eyes can see far into the distance, and his sight range is increased. Playing off of the whole captain kinda scout concept that he was designed to fit, I guess his old passive does make sense for that kind of concept, but it was pretty overpowered. I mean, just giving him a flat out higher range of sight is such a counterintuitive and unfair mechanic for someone to have in the game as a permanent passive. So on the April 18th, 2009 patch, which was the second week of the closed beta, it was changed into our fifth ability on the list, which is why I say we're double dipping here. Although they are still different abilities, they're kind of the same. Anyways, it was changed into a passive called Trailblazer, which had the effect, Teemo leaves a trail as he moves, increasing the movement speed of all allies and granting him a sight radius of the area for an extended period of time. 
Again, this passive did a nice job of fitting the captain scout theme with the vision and movement speed, kind of like he scouts ahead and then makes it easy and safe for his allies to follow. But again, this passive was a little bit too strong and really was just a weird mechanic to play against. So it was changed on patch 61 into his new passive of camouflage, which granted him stealth after standing still for a while without taking damage. Next on the list at number 6 we have the first ability that wasn't a passive. In fact it was something completely different. It was a toggle. That was a passive effect. And it belonged to Ryze, with the name of Mana Leech slash Arcane Mastery which at the time was his W, with two different effects. Mana Leech causes auto attacks to seal a percent of the target's mana on hit, while Arcane Mastery increased his maximum mana pool and causes auto attacks to become magic damage instead of physical while also dealing bonus damage based on Ryze's maximum mana. So this ability caused Ryze to have powerful magic damage dealing auto attacks and have a strong source of mana in lane too, giving him a lot more inherent power and honestly it was just a really strong ability. It was later replaced in his kit on patch 61 when he received a full rework to his kit. At number 7 it's back to the wonderful world of passive abilities, this time on Vagar with a passive called Entropy, which had the effect Vagar's attacks steal 5 ability power per strike for 8 seconds, and it stacks. Man, stealing ability power from your opponent on Vagar nonetheless seems pretty strong, although I guess it's interesting because it would technically hurt the enemy AP scaling component of his ultimate, right, since his damage scales off of the enemy's AP. Well, no actually, because at the time his ultimate scaled off of his opponent's maximum mana rather than their AP, with bonus damage versus champions who didn't have mana, so no, this passive is just straight up really strong. But it was deemed to be a little bit unintuitive, since auto attacking on Vagar isn't really something you might want to do in a fight, so it was changed to steal 25% of the target's ability power non-stacking on a single auto attack. Now that's a passive that's just insane on a champion like Vagar, but again the auto attacking component was weird, so it was changed to passively steal 20% of any nearby champion's ability power. And although it couldn't exceed 5 times of Vagar's level, hot damn that is one hell of a passive, which was no doubt overpowered as heck, and eventually was reworked into his current passive of Equilibrium on patch 94, which gives him mana regen based on his missing mana. And at number 8 we have another wonderful passive this time from Alistar called Colossal Strength, with the effect to reduce damage taken by turrets and have Alistar deal extra damage to turrets as well. These values initially scaled from 20, 30, 40 to 50% and it really just made him a tower diving machine and the extra damage dealt to turrets wasn't that bad either. The reduced damage taken from turrets was generally the most powerful part, especially on a champion like Alistar who can tower dive so well. So that component of the passive was removed entirely on patch 9.22.15, and to compensate for what was the complete destruction of his passive, the damage dealt to turrets component was buffed on the next patch to scale at a rate of 20.60.40 overall. That passive was kind of lame though, I mean just dealing extra damage to turrets for someone like Alistar is cool but not really practical, it was really just all about taking less damage from turrets. So on patch 116 it was changed completely into the trample passive that he still has to this day of dealing area of effect damage after casting an ability. At number 9 it's once again a sweet sweet passive, although this time I can guarantee that you've heard about it before, just not in the state that I'm going to mention. And it's Ryze's old passive from when he had Mana Leech in his kit, which at the time was Desperate Power. It caused Ryze to gain increased ability power when his health was low, a pretty interesting mechanic that scaled at the rate of 40, 80, 120 AP and would activate when he hit below 40% HP. Although AP seems maybe a little bit weird for Ryze at the time his abilities scaled with AP much better rather than having scaling based on mana so it was a pretty strong passive that was quite powerful in lane. Desperate Power would replace Spellflux as his ultimate when he received a rework on patch 61 where Spellflux was moved to his E and Mana Leech was removed from his kit. And rounding out the list at number 10, it's another ability from Twisted Fate actually, and it's the only active ability on the list, and it's Seal Fate, which was his old Q, which had two different effects. The first was to reveal the cursed fate of his enemy, dealing periodic damage until the curse runs out, or until he can kill an enemy unit. And the second effect was Twisted Fate draws a powerful card from his deck, dealing damage to an enemy target and silencing them for a short duration. 
although it's unclear how these effects exactly work for this kit, and we don't really have the true details. But I do think the first sounds like maybe an on-hit passive, while the second was definitely an active. This was his Q in the first few weeks of the alpha stage, but his wild cards were actually on his W at the time. On the May 9th 2009 patch, which was the first couple of weeks of early closed beta, his wild cards were moved to his Q, and pick a card was added to replace seal fate entirely on his W. It's hard to judge how good seal fate actually was, since we honestly don't know that much about the details of the ability, but it does seem to be an interesting mechanic, but I'm not really sure how it matches up to the versatile tool of pick a card. Either way, that's it for the list. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, and if you didn't, hit the dislike, and if this video hits 10,000 ratings, I'll make another one like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.